G'day, Eric Check from North Keppel Island Environmental Education Centre. Hey, today we're at Sloping Island. Sloping Island's a part of the National Park. And today what we're doing, we're doing a 10 minute time swim. So this is for uh, Simpsons diversity, for some of the seniors that are looking into that. And it's also a part of Eye on the Reef. So we're gonna do a 10 minute time swim with our GoPro and we're gonna film what we see out on this reef. This reef is predominantly covered in staghorn coral that's competing for sunlight. Uh, but perhaps there should be some other types of coral that we'll see today and life. So the goal of analysing reef diversity is to investigate the factors influencing reef connectivity and making predictions about associated impacts to diversity. This can be achieved by using an index to determine rank abundance. Rank abundance is a way to measure diversity of an ecosystem. When comparing biodiversity of ecosystems, ecologists consider the number of individuals, the richness and diversity of species, and the relative abundance or evenness of different species. A healthy ecosystem often has high biodiversity and evenness. Dominance of one organism is an indicator of poor health. But why do we need to measure diversity? We need a good knowledge of what is out there to provide a baseline for future changes in biodiversity. For this, we can use Simpson's indices to compare differences in reef communities through space and time across the Great Barrier Reef. So we spent a solid 10 minutes swimming around the survey site of Sloping Reef, keeping an eye out for key species and other things of interest. For most of this snorkel, we picked an area which represents the seabed and the overall condition of the site that we were surveying. Uh, this is close to the oyster rocks and there's a different diversity of the coral up higher in the lower tide mark. So just here we're zooming in on some sponge coral. This type of coral is typically found in the shallower parts of As we come in a bit shallower, we can see a lot of that rock and rubble that's on the ground, but there's still various soft corals and also bleached corals scattered amongst the rocks. There's also a bit of fish down there uh, hiding in amongst that structure, this reef. As we come up over the rock here, we can see a little bit of plate coral there, but it starts to predominantly come staghorn coral, it's that bleached white colour. In the first two minutes of this video, not only have we been seeing pure white bleaching, but there's also some corals that are showing a purple glow. Uh, bleached corals can also appear fluorescent and also purple tinged bleaching. The bleaching in some cases can be weirdly beautiful as the corals shed their algal cloaks and reveal themselves. It's the first signs of a bit of a sand passage uh, through the metal there with staghorn coral on the left but then several other corals are piled up on the right hand side. A lot of these corals are heavily bleached with almost no remaining symbiotic algae. From this point forward it's either death for these corals or a long slow road to recovery. Even those corals that survive will remain metabolically and reproductively compromised for months. With that being said, all the heavy rainfall recently in the Keppels and also the southeasterly winds have really cooled the water temperature down, which is doing a massive favour for the corals. You can see on the close-ups there just how white a lot of them really are, although some of the staghorn coral on the left was its normal sort of brownish colour, uh, but it's typically gone white on the tips. Some healthy corals display such vivid blues and other colours naturally, not during a bleaching event. But these corals are rare. What we are seeing at the moment on the Great Barrier Reef is certainly bleaching. I've found more fish on this reef since the bleaching event has occurred. Uh, however, maybe that's just because the corals that we're seeing are white and the fish and marine life that are in amongst it aren't camouflaged as much into the corals.
Again, we're seeing some of those amazing colours and pigments present on the coral polyps. They're often fluorescent, hence the day glow appearance of some of these corals. There's a close up there, really vivid blue colour, there's pinks and oranges. But as soon as we start to move away from those uh, vivid fluorescent corals, we're seeing a lot of algal overgrowth. When the polyps die, macro or turf algae take over. It's a process that is very evident uh, along much of the Great Barrier Reef. Especially in warm or nutrient rich waters, these algae outcompete any coral trying to settle or spread on the reef, taking over areas that coral previously dominated. Also on Sloping Island Reef, we see a lot of sea anemones, which are close relatives of corals. They're also prone to bleaching, which causes them similar problems for the fish that use them for shelter. There's another one of those very fluorescent corals, a purple colour. The primary factor determining whether these corals survive the bleaching is the amount of time that is exposed to the elevated temperature under high light conditions. The longer the coral is exposed, the greater the chances of mortality. Corals can recover quickly from these bleaching events once the sources of stress are removed. In some cases, corals can even regain their colour within days. However, each bleaching event weakens the overall health of these corals over time. As we zoom in a bit closer on this coral, sort of at this stage the turf algae has taken over and covered what was once a healthy coral. So that one's really suffering there. Uh, the predominant sort of animals that were in the water during this 10 minute time swim were uh, butterfly fish, uh, there was a giant clam earlier in the video, uh, just many grazing herbivores, and some beaked coral fishes. The Sloping Island is quite a resilient reef, uh, it gets a lot of that open ocean current coming from the east and it's quite resilient, there's that constant flow coming through. Uh, cooling that reef down and there's some really good marine life here. There's a large variety of bleached and colourful plate corals there. It's quite pretty to look at really. As we approach the last two minutes of the time swim, I wanted to talk a little bit about Eye on the Reef. Eye on the Reef is a monitoring and assessment program that we use at North Keppel Island Environmental Education Centre and anyone else can use. It does enable them to, whoever visits the Great Barrier Reef, to contribute to its long-term protection by collecting valuable information about reef health, marine animals and incidents that it used to understand the bigger picture and inform how we can manage the reef. There's a number of ways to get involved and everyone's contribution is welcomed. Whether you're just a regular day tripper, a tourist, a first time visitor, a fisher, or even marine park rangers, marine tourism staff, marine scientists or just a student who's visiting. One of the easiest ways anyone can get involved is by downloading the free Eye on the Reef app to record reef health. Now, if you're someone who can't get out to the reef but you're interested in what's happening, uh, there's interactive sighting network maps that allows anyone in the world to see the amazing wildlife being encountered and recorded by visitors to the Great Barrier Reef or incidents. Just towards the end of this swim, there's a really great going along those corals there, lots of different colours. There's many other ways to measure diversity uh, on a reef. Uh, other methods could include a laying a transect line underwater. Um, that's significantly more difficult than it is on land. Uh, but basically it gives the opportunity to survey what fish and substrate, invertebrates and human impact are happening along that transect line. 
Uh, if you're interested, you can check out our other videos uh, posted by North Keppel Island Environmental Education Centre. Uh, there's been two that have been uploaded, one from this reef, a Transact line, and also from Corroboree Island, both of which are blue zones and they're in the National Park area. Uh, just in the top right hand corner there, the species diversity indices that take into account both species richness and species evenness is Simpson's diversity index. Uh, and that is displayed there, the formula for you to use for your assessment. Well, I hope you enjoyed the snorkel just as much as I did and that the information uh, over the last 10 minutes or so has helped you out. Oh, there's some more fish swimming through there. And it's what you will need to complete your assignment or assessment. Now make sure to give the video a like. Feel free to share the video with your peers or anybody else. Uh, if you'd like to subscribe to our school page, that would be brilliant. And if you have any questions, you